Hey guys, how are you? Vladimir Rybakov here from Traders Academy Club and welcome to the weekly Forex forecast for the week starting of 19 to 24 of May 2019. Previous weekend I wasn't around as you know, I was in a business trip in Bulgaria, it was wonderful uh, and uh, I couldn't hold my uh, uh, weekly video. So here we are back to trading. So if you are watching uh, this channel for the first time, welcome to our community. I invite you to subscribe to the channel right below the video and to join me and my team in our totally free Telegram channel. To do so, just follow the link in the description below. And as always, my request to you, if you enjoy the work and you find these videos useful and what we do for the community useful, please show your support back, hit the like button, drop some feedback below in the comment section your support is our motivation to keep do these things for you and for our, our, our community. So uh, the way we work as always we review the previous uh, forecast because the previous weekend I wasn't around uh, so that's like two weeks ago and uh, we prepare the current forecast we will see what's still relevant what has to be updated what worked what failed what has to be changed and so on uh, clear follow-up and there are several new instruments that join us this week uh, so on monday i will publish this <coughs> sorry uh, this uh, uh, forecast in a text format so you can come to the blog vladimirrebakov.com okay and you will see this post ready for you in the forecast or just come back to the video and below in the description and the comments you would find direct link to the text format for the forecast so that will happen on monday let's quick have a look what do we have uh on the coming week in terms of fundamental news there are several very very important events which we have to pay attention to first of all weekend elections in australia big deal uh canada bank holiday not a big deal well just for the canadians right uh speech from uh, powell monetary policy in australia and then on tuesday we have the inflation report hearings in britain retail sales in new zealand which expected to be pretty low speech from governor love in australia cpi in britain which is showing some good expectations and if this number comes big that might be some game changer for the pound recently uh, FOMC meeting minutes in uh, Wednesday, Thursday, it's all about news from uh, Europe and the European parliamentary elections begin. This is day number one and we have day number two on Friday and during the weekend it's about to end. So that's for the fundamental view. Pay attention. Very, very, very interesting uh, uh, week in terms of the events. So let's see. Let's go to the post and see what worked. Personally, before we start, uh, the last uh, week was not, well, gen uh, <laughs> generally speaking, was not good week for me with the swing trading because I had to adjust many of the positions, cut some losses, break even others, and finish uh, with other pairs in early year profits than I would expect. Part of trading, for swing trading, it's not always uh, uh the best sometimes it's all about patience wait for your moves and when the market is going against you and this is what i will show today do not try to be a hero cut your positions i know it's uh, uh, easy to say cut early and let your profits run right but that's what it takes when we are talking about long term trading swing term trading you have to be able to do that and I'll show you my technique, how I did that. And there were several several pairs which I had to do that. Pound, dollar, euro, franc, gold. And I'll show you uh, all that now. So let's start with the euro versus the pound. And what did we see here? The euro pound expectations were and remain in, in, in terms of cycles bearish. And we were bearish as long as the weekly did not tick a divergence. The plan was and remains sell 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 right it was going pretty good we went all the way down to the bottom of this range and look what happens here turn around with a kicker pattern well piercing pattern a beautiful bullish 
divergence on the daily chart but the main thing here turned to be whoa, where all these the feebles came from let's remove the main thing came to be the double bottom hold with a bullish divergence on the histogram coming from the weekly so now let's talk about the cycle we are still in the triple the main idea wasn't remain still for the longer run let the rallies to happen and sell them that's still the plan however this remember we could be experiencing two legs down and we could simply dance in a range and this is a very 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 possible scenario by the way if you hear a noise now my neighbor here is uh, mowing his grass his lawn so uh, <laughs> if you hear the noise sorry um so basically once again both scenarios are totally acceptable for us we can still go with and expect that to happen uh, and push lower or just play within this range and then sell but in order to be able to sell we have to make sure that the weekly is bearish and the daily is bearish currently well uh, one week ago right the, exactly by the weekend when i could not uh, uh, have the uh, weekly forecast we had the turn around and this turn around happened in straight lag and look what happens now weekly is bullish divergence daily is bullish divergence so is or does the cycle relevant at that moment of course not when cycles are not synchronized with the uh oh, my back is itching um when cycles are not synchronized with the divergences that means the money flow and what the indicator represents the mathematics behind it the real money and the mathematics behind it the real moves are not synchronized if they aren't synchronized how can we trade them so the long term isn't relevant at that moment what about the short term weekly is bullish divergence daily last divergence was bullish we have a breakout here above the last high we are getting out of this range in correction that opens the door for great possibility for two waves retrace correction to this possible triple cycle that means uh, uh, we can expect some hit here corrections and very likely one more rally now look what happens here in terms of the bollingers we have a straight movement from one to other bollinger band now 50 percent deviation is acceptable zone so all that becomes a critical area where we do expect a turnaround and then possible second leg to develop so the way i would be looking to trade the euro pound is a short term for the rallies before it will again fit in the long-term cycles but currently the short term is controlling not the long term we don't have setup for long term so there is nothing to talk about and look what happens on the bollinger bands here we have 20 plus candle ride divergence all around rsi around uh, um, well, not around above uh, 80 making the pressure very good zone now take a look here on the crystal ball stats we are on very 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 powerful days here 17 right now the big the end of the week right it has its pressure so i would not be surprised if we by the beginning of the week we will see this area acting as a resistance zone and we'll see some fake or slow down highs right some turnaround principles making some turnarounds right so basically turnarounds providing the next bottom to hold making bullish setup with bullish evidences uh, uh bullish candle pattern structure false breakouts on the downside right bullish divergences and then start looking for the next short term buys do not just attack levels uh wait with the confirmations with and then again again it could be divergences that could be false breakout trend line breakouts to the upside creation of the higher highs right but wait for the turnaround evidences a lot of traders just say oh it has to go up no it doesn't no it doesn't and i'll show you example of the pound dollar which technically had to go up and it doesn't so remember it's trading is never about drawing the lines correctly but making the right actions according to the lines you plan and it's a very very important thing stay aware of what the market tells you live okay 
So that's the plan for the euro versus the pound. Cat Frank, the idea was looking for buys, and the idea was as long as it holds the range or one more low. Let's take a look what do we have from Cat Frank. Actually, not much because Cat Frank here. It's pretty much right here, right? So the second leg is creating, and that's all. Since then, no real movements. We got stuck. So the question is what's coming next. And to be honest, as for now, I again don't really see any clear picture for the longer term as expected. We had a bearish divergence, double top and bearish divergence from the weekly. Same exactly was blockage here on the daily and the bigger picture with the moving averages. No real reasons for the buys. So we could easily dance around and create this kind of structure or it could easily make second push lower before the next buys take place at that moment personally i have no clear view on the cut front this is why for me it's currently going to the neutral list didn't get what want to see right now we are stuck inside two candles you can see here no bullish structures no bullish turnaround no trend line is broken no higher highs nothing so why would we just go buys right doesn't make sense so abandoning the debt not clear going neutral oh the dollar wanted to go long if we break above this high or we create three higher highs higher lows and if not we are going to head all the way down to the trend lines so let's take a look on the OZ dollar here we are this and this right we never this was our four hour chart that we were following we never got the higher highs we never got the structure of three higher highs three higher lows and instead we broke below the last low just to continue lower with the elections coming and basically look what happens here usa china relationships is the direct impact on australia they are very seriously related and connected to the chinese economy and you can see the impact what's next is going neutral the pressure is still bearish with the elections coming new spirit new energies maybe at that moment the OZ dollar my plan is not clear as for now for the buys the sales reached its target i just want to remind you this was the list right this was the plan we are right there around this area it was around the 069 and started lower which which we are right there right now game over for me i am becoming neutral on this one we will see how that goes after the elections now the euro OZ the idea was looking for sell setups at the end of the rallies top of the range or the FIBO levels now let's take a look on the euro OZ. here we are it reached the top of the range right and never provided us the turn around what kind of turn around i'm talking about trend line breakouts or creating of lower lows alternatively it just continued all the way high without making any turn around to happen uh, all the highs going up all the lows going up now look what happened uh, what do we have here the long-term view for the euro versus the oz is still bearish according to this cycle do we have any reason for a sell currently according to weekly definitely not we don't have any bearish tick bearish divergence or anything like that according to the daily there is no divergence currently and the, the range was broken so no way to make any long-term decision and on the shore, if the long term cannot be in play, the Euro OZ is basically uh, suitable, possibly for the short term. Look at this critical area right here. And right now it's forming a slow down wedge. Beautiful divergence is created. And I think again, keep attention what happens after the elections. But this area, the could become very very critical for the euro versus the Aussie and to start making short-term moves down 
So we would definitely want to see good evidences here, like structures of the candle patterns, uh, false breakouts and lower lows, or structure of lower highs, lower lows for trend change. It, it could be on one lower time for no problem, but that's what you would want to see before attacking the cells. Now, another thing to pay attention to here in terms of the statistics, critical days indeed in play right now, right? 18, very beautiful level. If it doesn't hold the beginning of the week with the elections, next days are going to be way further. And that's by the end of the month and the beginning of the next month. So it, if it's about to happen, it's about to happen with the beginning of the week. Um, next one on the list, Euro versus the Kiwi. The idea was to get some corrections according to the daily chart with the daily divergence. Let's take a look what we are facing. We are basically still there, still do nothing, <laughs> right? Level of 61.8 still in play. Divergence still in play. I would expect some pullbacks from this area or slightly higher. I would definitely expect the Euro Kiwi to start pushing lower. Pay attention to the critical levels where we should be looking for evidences for. One of them is right now surrounding the 171. The other one would be around the 173, 73 plus. That's the places where we should be looking for the shoot to the downside. And then once we create a bullish hidden divergence, my plan would be again long term buys. So that's for the Euro versus the Kiwi. Not much change since. New Zealand and Canadian, our plan was and remain look for sales in terms of range, in terms of two waves, in terms of any other opportunity. Uh, New Zealand and Canadian is bearish, didn't really provide any good two waves from here, was holding this pattern, got this range inside the range and a breakout. Basically, that's the only thing the pair really provided since. The moves are not so fast, but still to the same direction. Weekly chart still bearish. Daily has nothing yet completed against. The levels to pay attention to remain critical around the 087 area and then 08530. Meanwhile, the pressure is still bearish. Sell the rallies would be still the plan. Dollar versus the yen. Now, this was a beautiful trade. It paid all the way down to the 38.2. Boom, straight. And of course, logically, we are currently facing a bounce. So what do we have with this pair? A false breakout, a bearish divergence. Now we are building here a bearish convergence. My plan, as long as this top holds this what is what I call invalidation for the plan. Break above that makes a game over. And my plan is sell the rallies. I would not be surprised if we continue on the bearish direction here. Next one, Euro versus the franc. Now, this is a very, very important example of what I'm going to show you, how you have to adjust a, a trade when it doesn't happen. There was a period of lack of stability in the last, last uh, two weeks. Trump, China, and the Eurozone trade war. The, when the market is not stable, traders tend to run to the yens and the francs. That's pretty much a, a very, very common thing. And that's what happened here. And the Euro franc, despite being an amazing technical setup, let me explain again, triple cycle upside, double wave, down with bullish divergence and the trend line breakout is a 90% of the times amazing setup which pays big time. But as I always say, the market doesn't care how well I draw or anyone draws the lines. Lines are just predictions. We trade facts. Now look, this was a beautiful breakout for a buy. And as always, I discuss about that when you get suddenly one shot retrace, one shot retrace, 
going through all the Fibonacci levels, this is a warning sign. It's not a guarantee the market will go against you for fall, but it's a warning sign and it shows you weakness of the powers you expected. In that case, I expected for the buys. I was with the bulls. The bulls failed to hold all the Fibonacci levels and went through 61.8 in one shot. What to do in such cases? I always do if I am in buys from this zone, I am, and I see this thing, I am cutting or fully or partially. What do I earn by cutting earlier? Think about it this way. If I'm risking just for example, 1% per trade, but I end up with total loss of half percent or 0.7%. It doesn't sound dramatical, but when you work with the principle of accumulation and you save 20 trades like that, okay, 20 trades where you just saved half percent of your risk, you just saved it, you didn't earn it, you didn't lose it, you just saved it, it's automatically accumulating in your profits. And trading is not about making more profits. It's mainly about making less losses. When the market gives signs against you, do not try to be a hero and don't start to blame whoever it is or whatever the system you work with. Oh, that doesn't work. That's piece of eh, right? But develop this uh, ability in your decision, in your trading decision to cut, accept it, accept and get out. You would feel much proud, much more proud of yourself by cutting earlier and later disco uh, discovering, oh, but it goes up. Okay, but I still ended up small loss rather than uh, uh, um, feeling regret of not cutting. It's much harder psychologically. So Eurofrank, again, was amazing. What happened? Nothing. And this was one of the pairs I had to cut and accept a loss. What do I see here? As for now, I see nothing. That's why at that moment, for the longer view, my uh, Eurofrank becomes neutral. No ideas for this pair at that moment. OZ Kiwi, we were looking to trade the break of the trend line and expected to reach the previous highs or more. OZ Kiwi broke the trend line right here and fly up all the way with an amazing risk reward ratio. What happened since, oops, sorry. What happened since we got a double top with one spike though? And we got a reaction to the downside. My long-term plan still remains bullish. And I would be looking for bullish setups. Do we have them, any of them right now? No. It might turn to be continuing divergence. It might turn to be bullish hidden divergence on the second round. Don't know what to say right now. But I would uh, pay our attention to some critical levels. Let's take a look on the crystal ball. First of all, as per the days, 24 is critical day that's, that happens on the second part of the week. So if we come slightly lower, this is a massive area here, right? If we come slightly lower and provide the buy opportunities here, that should be a very good buy opportunity for the OZ Kiwi. As per the levels, we drop the Fibonacci's and what do we discover? That we have a Fibonacci level right now. And if it will not hold, then we should get closer to 104. We have several critical zones here. Expect a fight from there. Keep attention to the elections because if the elections turn good, this would become a bullish divergence from the daily to waves. And by the break of the last high, we can talk about future rallies. If it pushes lower than the next critical zone to watch would be around 104, um, maybe slightly higher, slightly lower, looking for the buys there. So this pair, no action at that moment, paid a couple of weeks ago. Now, for the longer view again, 
on the watch list pound dollar was another trade which which i had to apply my technique and cut early the idea was bullish and that was simply amazing set pound dollar right here it was amazingly set again with the triple double structure trendline breakout bullish divergence the sky look blue but the market is a market and it came down straight leg when it goes through all the fibonacci levels in one leg and why one leg is so critical here because if it's just making correction correction happen in a range or two waves one wave represent weakness of the buyers and that's what happened one straight leg below the 61.8 and look what happens here this is the entry with the break of the trend line and right here we discover that we are below what do we do accept a small loss why it's critical because if not then you are going for a full loss and as i just said before if instead of one percent loss you are able to cut it and make it just half percent loss you immediately keep that into future accumulating profits this is what trading about it's a business of statistics not about being right yes about accepting being wrong cut it and make the right decisions that's why i show you these techniques how we apply that and also the things of course i talk about day after day in the live trading rooms uh, in the traders academy club so that's for the pound dollar what's next no clue there is no setup right now i'm not going for sales because of the weekly and the monthly cycles but i on the same time have no reasons for buys that means neutral next one before i go to the commodities i would like to talk about new setups to follow first of all the euro versus the canadian i expect this pair to start its second push lower and ideally to reach an approach the 61.8 maybe even the 100 levels of the fibonacci expansion from the weekly cycle now if we put here the daily first leg down right here and now the range in correction we get pretty much same levels now look what happens with the pair it is building up here some kind of triangle pattern after this trending structure break below that should be a great continuation to the downside let's quickly also have a look on the scanner i have here the SPT, the swing point trading scanner we have with the with the um, within the Traders Academy Club, and we can see both weekly and daily swings are bearish. So the cloud becomes bearish on the four hour. This has to become red as well when it does, and that could happen by the break of the daily triangle. It happens, and you get yourself a good opportunity for buys by the way the one hour chart already sets a good hint so that's for the euro cat the first edition next one pound versus the Aussie. we are facing here a beautiful <laughs> cycle and i draw a cycle uh where are my lines here uh we are facing here a beautiful cycle we can definitely draw it this way we can definitely draw it this way it doesn't matter how you put it together we are here in a bearish view i see here and this is pretty much the way i uh, treat that we have divergences on the histogram here on the last part also divergence on the moving averages so it's a beautiful blockage here with a false breakout with a dark cloud here pattern on the weekly time frame looks good daily time frame as well suggesting this to be kind of a triple cycle separate by itself divergence with the moving averages beautiful again kicker on the top it looks promising the way i see that pound versus the aussie is bearish sell the rallies is the plan so this pretty much looking for bearish setups with bearish evidences 
And the next one and the last one on the additional is the New Zealandian. By the way, uh, take a look on the pound uh, Aussie in terms of the stats, right? Check check the tops. See that? Beginning of May. Beginning of May is a critical place. So great confirmation here and very good possibilities for continuation to the downside. Now, take a look on the New Zealand and dollar. This is our next pair. Also, as per statistics, we are approaching to some critical days, the 20s, I call them. Uh, very, very, very possible that we are going to see some pullbacks to the upside here. Uh, 20 candles right already in play on the Bollinger Band. So short term bounces are acceptable. And I would assume we are going lower uh, since so sell the rallies would be a plan here. Why? I believe that the weekly is heading towards the magnet zone of the cycle. And this magnets area is right here. So the way I see that, we are going here. Sell the rallies on the daily chart should be a good opportunity for the uh, uh, for the pair. So I would not be surprised if around this area we would face some pullbacks, and sell the rallies would be the plan. Uh, that's for the forex view now gold and silver gold wanted to go long with the break of the trend line all the trend lines here were broken the big one the medium one and the last one as you know we always trade the last one with this bullish divergence previous week got a beautiful rally since then straight move down lower than 61.8 fibonacci you know my approach here that means lack of strength from the buyers i don't love to deal with such situations i am neutral on the gold from that moment waiting for clearer signs after you get yourself a pattern and a trend, and a trend line breakout for trend continuation the idea is momentum if the momentum is not gained don't find yourself praying to the market but it has to go up. No, it doesn't. It doesn't care how beautiful the lines would be. The market would do what the market will have to do. As for now, gold provides nothing. Silver the same, never broke any trend line. Yes, it has divergences. Sugar, never a trend line breakout, never higher highs. Big X on the silver going neutral again. Nothing to do with that. So what if there is divergence? Where do we have any official buy opportunity by making new high? We don't. And the oil, let's check if the oil was discussed. Yep, all was discussed. The idea was looking for sell the rallies. Uh, we are there. I still think that we are in the sell of rally structure here. So I believe this is what should happen. This is my invalidation. So for me, it's still sell the rallies. Uh, indices, I see nothing obvious and clear yet. We might see that uh, with the beginning of the next uh, week. As for now, only a potential. So uh, uh, waiting here a bit. And uh, just to make sure. Dollar index. Our plan was or break of the trend line or watching for evidences on the new highs. This is pretty much what's happening right now. Waiting for the next divergence, the next hit, next tick and sell opportunities. That's all for this uh, weekly forecast. Thank you very much for watching. I invite you to join me in the live trading rooms for more, much more instruments on daily basis day after day to join us just follow uh, the link in the description to traders academy club and uh, that's all looking forward to see you once again thank you very much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed that i'm vladimir Vekov from traders academy club and i wish you a wonderful trading week bye for now